an international weightlifting competition is going on at the Venice Beach in California. And in that competition, these two weightlifters, weightlifter A and weightlifter B are competing against one another. Now, as you can see, weightlifter A is lifting up a barbell of mass 50 kgs. And weightlifter B is lifting up a barbell of mass 100 kgs. And both of them are lifting this barbell from the ground to a height of 2 meters. So now we have to find out who is doing more work, weightlifter A or weightlifter B. So let us see how we can calculate this. Now over here, in order to find out the amount of work done by weightlifter A, we have to multiply the force that weightlifter A is applying on the barbels into the displacement that he is causing to the barbell. Now when a body is being lifted upwards, you have to apply a certain amount of force in order to do so. Now gravitational force acts on all bodies in the universe in the downward direction. So it is due to this gravitational force that every body has a weight. Now in order to lift this particular body in the upward direction against gravity, the force that will have to be applied will have to be equal to the weight of the body. So in order to lift the barbell, the force required will have to be equal to the weight of the barbell. So let us see how we can calculate the weight of the barbell. The weight of the barbell will be nothing but the mass of the barbell into the acceleration due to gravity. So the mass of the barbell is 50 kgs and the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second square. So the weight of the barbell is 500 kg meters per second square or we can write it as 500 Newton. So the weight of the barbell is 500 Newton and thus the force that is required to lift the barbell is also equal to 500 Newton. Now let us find out what is the work being done by weightlifter A in lifting this barbell. We found out that the force required is 500 Newton and the displacement that he is causing to the weights or the barbell is 2 meters. So thus we can say that 1000 joule of work is being done by weightlifter A. Now let us consider what happens when we try the same for weightlifter B. So weightlifter B is lifting up a barbell of 100 kgs. So in this case also we can find out the work done if we multiply force and displacement. So even in this case when weightlifter B has to lift up the barbell, the amount of force he applies on the barbell will be equal to the weight of the barbell. So let us see how we can find out the weight of the barbell that weightlifter B is lifting. So in this case, the mass of the barbell is 100 kg and the acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second square. So the weight of the barbell that he is lifting is 1000 Newton and thus we can say that the force required to lift the barbell is also 1000 Newton. Now let us see what the work done by weightlifter B is. The work done by weightlifter B is force that he is applying to lift the barbell times the displacement that he is causing. So we found that the force he is applying is 1000 Newton and the displacement that he is causing is also 2 meters. So the work being done by weightlifter B is 2000 joules. So the work that weightlifter B is doing in order to lift the barbell by a distance of 2 meters is 2000 joules. So it is clear to us that work done by A which is 1000 joules is less than work done by B which is 2000 joules. So weightlifter B is doing more work than weightlifter A. Now an additional piece of information is given to us. It is given that weightlifter A 
is lifting the 50 kg barbell in 10 seconds and weightlifter B is lifting the 100 kg barbell in 50 seconds. So who is doing more work per unit time? That is per second who is doing more work? A or B? So first we consider the case for A. A is doing a thousand joules of work in 10 seconds. So in 10 seconds, if A does a thousand joules of work, so in one second, A will do thousand by 10 work. So we can say that work done per unit time is nothing but work done by A divided by time taken by A. So this will be equal to thousand divided by 10, which is nothing but 100 joules per second. Thus, 100 joules per second is the work done per unit time by weightlifter A. Similarly, for weightlifter B, he is lifting the weight and doing 2000 joules of work in 50 seconds. So in 50 seconds, if the weightlifter B does 2000 joules of work, in one second, how much work will he do? He will do 2000 by 50 joules of work per second. So we can find out the work done per unit time by B as equal to work done by B divided by time taken by B. So that will be 2000 divided by 50, which is nothing but 40 joules per second. Thus, weightlifter B is doing 40 joules per second work per unit time or per second. So it is clear to us that per unit time, work being done by A is much more than the work being done by B per unit time. For A, it is 100 joules per second and for B, it is 40 joules per second. So A does more work per unit time than B. This work per unit time can be quantified and it is known by a particular name. This work done per unit time is known as power. And as we saw, power is nothing but work done divided by time taken. So in the previous case where we found that A did more work per unit time than B, we can say that the power of weightlifter A is greater than the power of weightlifter B. So power is a scalar quantity because it does not have any direction associated with it. Why? Because power in the forward direction or power in the backward direction or power northwards has no significance in terms of physics. So because it has no direction associated with it, power is considered to be a scalar quantity for all calculations. Now let us see what the unit of power is. We saw that power mathematically is given as work done divided by time taken. Now the SI unit for work done is 1 joule and the SI unit for time is 1 second. So power is 1 joule per second. Now the SI unit for work is joule and the SI unit for time is second. So joule per second is the SI unit for power which is known by another name watt. So thus the SI unit for power is watt which is represented by the symbol W. So now let us see how we can define one watt of power. If one joule of work is being done in one second, then the power spent is said to be one watt. Why? Because power is equal to work done divided by time taken. So in this case, one joule of work is being done in one second. So joule per second is what? And thus we can say that power spent is 1 watt. And this is how we define 1 watt.
Now there are certain bigger and smaller units of power and let us find out how these units are related to what. So first off we have kilowatt represented by kW, megawatt represented by mW and gigawatt represented by gW. One kilowatt is equal to 10 to the power of 3 watts. One megawatt is equal to 10 to the power of 6 watts. And one gigawatt is equal to 10 to the power of 9 watts. Similarly, there are certain other smaller units of power. One milliwatt represented by a small m and w is equal to 10 to the power minus 3 watts. And one microwatt represented as mu w is equal to 10 to the power minus 6 watts. So these are also some other units of power that are used in calculations. Now let me tell you an interesting story about the evolution of another unit of power. Now James Watt, after whom the term Watt has been coined, was one day in a coal mine. Now in the coal mine he was working with ponies. These ponies were taking a bunch of coal on their backs from one point to another in the course of their work. Now James Watt wanted to find out what the work done by each of these beasts was. So basically he wanted to find out how much amount of work one pony was doing. And in order to do so, he came up with another unit of power which today is known as horsepower. So horsepower is nothing but the amount of work that one pony is able to do. Now one horsepower has been related to what by the following relation. Now we saw that one horsepower is the power that is being generated by one horse. And once we convert it to the modern SI unit, we find that one horsepower is equal to 746 watts. So the amount of work done by the pony per unit time is 746 watts. And 746 watts is equal to one horsepower. Now let us try to find out another expression for power. We have just seen that power is equal to work done per unit time or W divided by T. Now we have studied that work done can also be written as F into S that is force into displacement. So now I replace this relation for W into the equation for power. So I can write P is equal to F into S divided by T. Thus I get P is equal to F into S divided by T. Now S is displacement and T is time taken. So how can I represent this value? Displacement by time taken is nothing but velocity. So I can write P is equal to F that is the force multiplied by velocity that is V. Thus P is equal to F into V because S by T is equal to V. So this is another relation for power which we can find if we have been given F and V. So now I have a very simple question for you. The question is that a man is exerting a force of 200 Newton in pulling a cart with a velocity of 16 meters per second. Now we have to calculate the power being spent by the man. Now we have been given two things that the force is 200 Newton and velocity is 16 meters per second. Now both these terms have been expressed in their SI units. So we can calculate power directly as P is equal to force that is F into the velocity that is V. We have been given the values 200 for force and 16 for velocity. Thus the power is 3200 or 3200 watts. Thus we can say that the man is spending 
3200 watts of power or 3200 watts of power. So we learned about an important concept that is power. Power is nothing but work done per unit time. Mathematically it is expressed as work done divided by time taken. So we have also defined what one watt of power is. Watt is the SI unit for power and one watt of power is defined as one joule of work which is done in one second.